The men rode into town from the north. Their horses were held to a walk, and they kept to the middle of the street. Unhurried, with three riders out front and two more trailing behind, they proceeded towards the center of town. No one spoke. The community, like many Midwestern farm towns, was bisected by a main thoroughfare. The business district, small but prosperous, consisted of four stores, a saloon and a blacksmith shop, and one bank. There were few people about and little activity in the downtown area. A typical Monday morning, it was the slowest time of the week, which, in part, accounted for the five riders. Their business was better conducted in confidence and without crowds. The men were unremarkable in appearance. Neatly dressed, they wore drab woolen suits and slouch hats. Three were clean-shaven, and the other two sported well-trimmed beards. All of them were above average height, but only one, somewhat large and burly, was noticeable for his size. Their mounts were an altogether different matter. At first glance, the animals appeared to be common saddle stock. On closer examination, however, a uniform sleekness and conformation became apparent. The horses were built for endurance and stamina, staying power over long distances. In the center of town, the riders wheeled to the left and halted before the bank. There was a military precision to their movements, smooth and coordinated, somehow practiced. The two bearded men stepped down and handed their reins to the third man in the front rank. Without hesitation, the two riders in the rear positioned their mounts to cover the street in both directions. A moment passed while one of the bearded men took a long look around. His bearing was that of a field commander, and he subjected the whole of the business district to a slow, careful scrutiny. Then, followed by his companion, he turned and entered the bank. Inside the door, he stopped and quickly scanned the room. The cashier's window and the vault were to the rear. He noted that the vault door was closed and, to all appearances, locked. To his immediate left, seated behind a desk, the bank president was engaged in conversation with three middle-aged men. By their dress and manner of speech, they were gentlemen landowners and, therefore, no threat.